Hey everybody, I'm Patrick Allen from Lifehacker, and I'm here with John Quain to talk smart home hubs. These nifty little gadgets connect to your smart home devices via Wi-Fi, so you can control them all right from your smartphone. We're also going to be covering water sensors, which you can connect to your smart home hub and use them to track water temperature, monitor leaking, or even watch out for potential flooding. So stay connected, this is Home Hackers. To get some inspiration for our hub hacks, I decided to check out the new residential development at 60 White Street that's been fully outfitted with integrated systems by Cloud9 Smart. Wow. Tell me about these hub systems that you have here at 60 White. So is everything connected to just one system? Everything is connected to one system. Well, let's take a look. The lights, the shades, and the temperature, you can control the air conditioning, the heat. This could also be controlled remotely on an app on your phone. So if you're away, you can turn on your heat or air conditioning from wherever you are. All right, well, let's take a look at those water sensors you have installed. Okay, so could this be a place where you'd have a water sensor? Absolutely. You could put water sensors underneath the sink, by the dishwasher, the same way we have it by the washing machine, which would detect any kind of leakage or temperature change. An alarm would go off and notify the owner. Uh, and that could save you a lot of trouble. Yes, it, it could. Or if you're renting out a place. Exactly. Okay, JQ, we've got three smart home hubs here. So why don't you tell me about what we have? All right, so the first question is to hub or not to hub. With a lot of these devices, they don't go wirelessly directly to your router. So it means that you have a little box like this that you've got to plug into your router and then wirelessly connect to that device, a water sensor, a camera, what have you. This one is from Smart Things. It's owned by Samsung, so it works with a lot of different devices. It's about $80 just for that piece right there. Okay. Plus, you've got to buy the sensors, which are $30, $40 for each sensor. All right. Amazon Echo, and this is the Echo Plus. It's brand new from Amazon. It has Alexa. She tells jokes, she sets timers for the laundry, she tells recipes, she does all that stuff, but they built a hub into this model. But this model is $150. But if you're already into the Amazon ecosystem and you want to go smart home, this might be the way to go. Yeah, and people love Alexa, and if they were putting Alexa in another room, that might be the right. way to go. And lastly, this is Wink's model. It's a brand new one. You see it in some of the big box stores. It's their second version. The idea behind this hub is it'll work with every kind of wireless device. So there you'll hear things like Zigbee and Z-Wave or other wireless standards. Okay. It has that. It has Wi-Fi. It has Bluetooth built into it. It's a little hit or miss, unfortunately. Sometimes you plug it in and the things work. The next device, not so much. But it's only $100 and it does work with a lot of different devices, that might be something you might want to try. Why don't you tell us a little more about the Samsung Smart Things? This is a typical hub. It works with a lot of different devices, but you have to do two things first. One okay. is Ethernet port. You've got an Ethernet port you have to plug into your router, right. your home router, so find that. You also need power, so you need a power outlet for that as well. It has a battery backup in there in case the power goes out. Okay, JQ, let's talk water sensors. <laughs> right. What do we have here? They're not the sexiest things in the world, but there's a lot of damage done to homes in the United States every year. Nine billion dollars worth of damage Whoa. just because of leaks. Mm -hmm. These water sensors are supposed to alert you if there's the slightest bit of moisture that makes contact underneath. They have little contacts on the bottom. Circuit is put together. You get that circuit, it sends you a text message or an email saying there's a problem at home. And then you can get there fast, take care of it before it turns into a, a disaster. A exactly, that's the idea. Now, this one is only $30 or $40 from Smart Things. It just senses water, that's all it really does. Okay. The Fabaro one, it's got sensors on the bottom, but it will also sound an alarm inside your house, an audible alarm. And okay. it will also have tilt sensors, so if somebody moves it, you know about that as well. A little bit more sensitivity, it's a little bit more money, it's $50. So today we're gonna start with a little basic one, show people how to install it, where they might install it as well. Okay, great, let's do it. All right, the very first thing you need with this hub is you need power, so find a power outlet nearby, but you also need to connect it via ethernet cable to your router. So look for an open ethernet port in the back of your router, 
plug it in. So we've got our smart hub plugged in and ready to go. What's next? Uh, the next thing to do, of course, always the next thing to do, download the app. Of course. So it's a free app. It's easy to download. There's an iOS one. There's an Android app. It's free. Once you've done that, it'll ask for a code. Okay. So in this case, it's on the back of the instruction booklet, right? right? There's a special code. Sometimes it's a QR code that you can scan with your phone on some devices. Either way, that's just to secure the connection. Once you've done that, it'll look for firmware updates. It'll connect your phone to the hub, the hub to your network. So we've got the hub all connected. It's connected to the app. What do we do now? Well, it doesn't do us much good unless we connect stuff to it. So we're going to connect, in this case, a water sensor. Okay. This little one is battery powered, the Smart Things one. Just pop the cover off it, take the tab out, right. snap it back together, and now she's ready to go. Now we have to find a place for it. In this case, we're going to try a sink. And my advice is look under the sink. Usually there's a damp place. Maybe moisture condenses down there. Don't put the sensor there because you're going to get a lot of false alerts. But maybe under one of the feed pipes going up to the sink, put the sensor in a dry spot, and that should warn you should anything go wrong. All right, so we've placed the sensor under the sink. Now we want to connect it to the app. Exactly. So hopefully it's close enough to the hub that it's receiving a wireless signal. Mm -hmm. You tap on the app, it says, add a thing. Okay. Tap the button again. It'll look for the sensor. In this case, our water sensor it's popped there. up. It's already up. So it'll tell you things like what the battery level is like, whether it's dry and wet, and other information, all from the same app. Great. Now that you know how to do that, you can add anything to this hub. You can add a camera, a door lock, even a garage door opener. It's a simple, same process. You can do it yourself. Awesome. Thanks for watching Home Hackers. <laughs>